Hello, welcome to game six of my match against Johns. Uh, game five was a quick loss for me, um, and it was not close. Uh, we will see how game six goes. Uh, game six does not seem like it's doing much better, um, as, as I start with uh, two. And can't really buy anything on two, so I guess I will end buys here. Um, Sears, pretty good draw in general. It's a little tough to make work here. I think you probably want to supplement it with archives. Um, but you can grab a scrap, certainly, early on, and then you can grab some merchants. Um, and potentially you get a crypt just to thin out all of the coppers. I think turn one, turn two crypt is a bit, you know, you end up drawing it with two coppers, two estates, and you're sad. But turn, uh, you know, once we get a couple archives, then grabbing a crypt to, to thin out all the coppers, and then you're drawing with seers and merchants and stuff. Um, seems good. Rail carriage can give you plus actions. I don't really say like, we just click on seer here. Um, hopefully they don't high roll and... Uh, Hit five here, although it's not much of a high roll. It's it's like 60%. This is just a really sad opening um, if they hit four, um, which it looks like they do. I can grab my own Nomad Camp now. Nomad Camp can be drawn with this, and I'm almost certain to hit five next turn, um, or four next turn, or three, whatever the, the price point is I wanted. I wanted, wanted a three, I guess. Um, the Seer is the bottom two cards of the deck. Which I think in general is fine. Um, I should really want to buy a scrap, so I'm going to not butterfly this. But I see the point of the, the butterfly. Um, decent chance to draw either the scrap or the nomad camp here. Um, certainly we'll scrap estates and then consider yeah butterflying nomad camps for um, for seers. Um, early on, I think probably you get two or three seers and then grab an archive. And then like a crypt, something like that. Maybe you grab a rail carriage earlier. That lets you play multiple things. Um, merchants also are nice because they draw with the seer and they effectively make the seer draw an extra card beyond what it can already draw. Okay, we didn't... Uh, man, I don't quite know what to do here because I have Nomad Camp, Scrap, Three coppers estate. So if I bottom deck anything but one of the three coppers, I'm going to be really sad. Um, okay, here I can play card action and then return the Nomad Camp for a Seer. Um, buy another Merchant, I think. I'll gain the Silver off of the Scrap play later. Card action. Return it for a Seer. Gain a merchant. Okay, so now I've got two merchants and a scrap that I can draw and an estate out of nine cards. So I'm decently likely to draw one of those. Um, and if the seer is in the top half, then I could potentially get that off of like a merchant draw. I feel a little bit behind because of bottom decking the seer, but I do have an extra seer that they don't have. Um, they've gotten my... Yeah, I didn't get a scrap until later, so... Man, though, that's a nice turn hitting nine. Um, their, seer just, their seer just drew three things. And then uh, they played their horse and drew two coppers. Which is kind of crazy. Uh, maybe they drew the estate, but um, that is a very, very nice turn. Um, I feel like I have those in my deck if I can, I can draw here. Okay, that's nice. So I'll play this. Okay, um, so this is going to draw me two coppers, I guess, but that's fine. All right, so I've got five coins. Um, I can certainly scrap an estate for what? I assume this is like card horse, like card silver, buy another seer, and then try to draw it next turn. Um, if I go card coin, I can actually top deck the seer, right? Um, it's still going to be hard for me to get quality out of that merchant, but I think having the extra seer is, is so nice that it's worth it. 
Were they able to use Traveling Fair last turn? No, they just bought Seer Merchant. Yeah, I guess if you have eight, you kind of want to buy two things. They had nine, actually. Um, this is, again, not the greatest start. I've got a couple of merchants I can find. Um, and... If I find a merchant, I can potentially find a seer, or if I find an estate, I can draw into it. Okay, they bought a crypt. Okay, the top card is a copper. Um, okay, so my bottom five cards are two coppers, merchant, two seers. So this seems like a decent time to take silver horse. And just buy a, another seer um, or like an archive um, I don't quite think I'm there yet in the crypt um, next turn should be pretty solid I could also think coin buy and buy two two uh, um, no because I really need I really need to get the silver for the uh, um, I need the silver for the uh, merchants to work so you're like silver horse maybe buy one archive and then grab a crypt next turn um well the next turn should be pretty solid for draw um it's a tough choice i'm almost drawing enough that the coppers aren't that huge of a deal and i will end up probably scrapping one or two along the way um so the choice is archive seer royal carriage um Crypt Rail Carriage lets me do some more tricks with, with like Nomad Camps. Um, and lets me start with like an extra Seer on top in case the first Seer doesn't work. I think I'm good with a Rail Carriage to start. Hopefully, hopefully draw some stuff. I feel like my draws have been not good this turn, this game. Um, not really sure if that's just my impression here or, or what. I mean, I bottom decked the Seer, which is a huge, huge deal. Um, they top decked the Nomad Camp, bought a Scrap, which was a little bit unlucky. They played a Nomad Camp to buy a Nomad Camp. That already, I think, could have been returning. But they got the Seer. Yeah, so I just didn't see my Seer until turn five, and I only drew one estate, um, which I guess is kind of expected, but... Yeah, in turn six, they played their Seer and drew three cards in a deck with all those coppers in it. So I think that was quite lucky. Um, I don't know. I also, this is a terrible shuffle. I bottom decked all of my, both Seers and the Merchant. And I easily could have, the Merchant was a little bit higher, but we gotten flipped by the Seer. And I could have drew, drawn into these Seers. Um, so I'm not, not really sure if I could have done anything different or if that was just the way the shuffles worked out. Um, this turn should be very nice for me. I should be able to get like a seer and a nomad camp, something like that. Nomad camp that I can plan on um, plan on returning for another seer or um, crypt or something something that I, I need in the middle of the turn or even another royal carriage. Um, the royal carriages will be nice for plus actions and using like grave robber stuff later on. Um, this is like a huge turn for them. They can get like top deck seer and two merchants or something. Well, I don't think you want to top deck merchants actually. You can top deck a seer and buy two merchants and then set aside four coppers or something. Okay, yeah, Royal Carriage, Two Merchants, something like that. Um, they do have to top deck the Sears for this to work. Like, I've been bottom decking my Sears every shuffle. So if they have a shuffle where they don't put a, see a Sear off the bat, then they're going to be in trouble um, for at least that turn. And they have more merchants than me, and now they're going to crypt a bunch of stuff. So sometimes, like, you'd rather have your good luck be, your, you know, sometimes your good luck early spirals so where you can't even have bad luck later. Um, okay, I do have a silver down there. Um, 
I guess I will play this royal carriage, which will draw me the silver and the copper. Okay, so I'm going to have 10 money here. I'm actually going to trash this horse for um, something or other. Coin by silver. That gets me to 11. I can play Traveling Fair. I can buy Traveling Fair and uh, Top Deck a Seer and uh, Nomad Camp. And just gain a Nomad Camp regular, or do I want to gain another merchant? Um, I'd like to start getting the tricks with uh, gameplay going. Um, but I think another merchant is still needed. And I want to leave it in the deck, give me a chance to draw with the Seer. They did set aside a lot of their payload, so that's at least a chance for me to um, do a little bit more with my turns. Given that they're losing out a lot of coppers. It also means that they're more reliable and they can do more, more stuff in any given turn. Um, they can like return a merchant for a nomad camp, then draw that and return it for a seer or something. Or a royal carriage, yeah, that seems seems good. But yeah, I have three merchants, got a scrap. Um, I did trash the horse. Maybe that silver last turn should have been a horse. Uh, I, I believe that now, that silver last turn should have been a horse. Um, gives me more outs to hit here. Um, they're going to have six. Uh, I don't know if they're just going to like scrap one copper a turn or something as they come off the crypt to keep themselves thin. Uh, coin by silver, most likely. Although if it's coin by silver, I could have done action by silver and played the merchant to draw the silver. Action silver horse. Okay, they had a seer still in hand. And they can rail carriage and return this for something. Another royal carriage, a grave robber, something. Grave robber should be good here. Um, their deck control enables them to do more stuff than me. And there's actually a horse in there. <laughs> there's nothing else to do with it. Um, assume this will be like merchant seer, just double merchant. Grave robber doesn't seem terrible either. Rip. Um, I go back to that turn six where they drew uh, Merchant Nomad Camp Horse. And if this silver was a horse, I would have been able to play on. But I can't really just expect my deck to just like utterly fall apart. Did I buy a Nomad Camp last turn? Bought a Merchant. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm just going to top deck a Seer so I can have a good turn next turn, but like they're so far ahead that I probably should design soon. We're not quite at the two hour point for the match, so I'll give it another, another minute or two. I feel like they're meandering a little bit. They're not like getting right towards the, the build. I made like a pointing motion with my hands like right towards the optimal build order, but because of the way it's this kingdom has happened, I'm just so far behind that it doesn't really matter. Um like the crypts didn't really help them that much. They're just far enough ahead that it didn't matter that they set aside all those coppers and 
I could have easily drawn some of these sears in my last hand. <laughs> and I still have all those merchants down there. Um, and maybe I just, if that silver had been a horse, but I don't know, I've also got a bunch of merchants and row carriages and stuff. So I have a bunch of ways that I can draw cards. Um, I assume these series are going to draw me just like a huge amount of things. Yeah, so maybe I should have trashed silver for action by silver and then played the horse to draw it, or actually my horse played the horse to draw it, something like that, or even just butterfly the horse. Um, there are butterfly tricks, so like if they screw up the piles, like game play with butterfly stuff can be pretty powerful. Um, problem is they have all the real carriages. And they have all the ability. The royal carriages give them actions, which give them the ability to do stuff like that. Um, and it's complex enough that they're not going to play it out really fast. But I'll at least have a really good turn here, um, as all of my things that cost the amount that I want to draw with Seer are at the bottom of my deck. I mean, I assume they're just, yeah, they're royal carriaging the merchant more for the village effect than the extra coin. Um, and I could have followed suit on whatever whatever turn it was after they did bought a crypt, but it seems like they're a turn ahead of me at that point, at least, and just following their exact pattern doesn't make much sense to me. I know some some players will say that you should don't deviate from your optimal play just because your opponent does it a half turn ahead of you, but I tend to think. Um, at this level that I would rather take a little bit of a different strategy than try to hope my opponent gets unlucky. All right, well, we'll put the real carriage first. Oh, hey, we found, we found our good cards. Um, talk backing two coppers. There's here, cross that. Okay, so we're drawing deck here. Um, I can play a merchant first. There's a copper on top. I wonder exactly what I want to do here. Um, so I can scrap a silver for action by action horse silver and draw it with merch, draw both of those with, uh, I could probably roll a carriage to the horse, right? Play the scrap for action coin horse, right? So Seer reveals the top three, right? So if I gain two cards, um, if I gain three cards costing two, I'll be able to see them both. So we have one action silver horse on this first one. Um, and then I can decide from there. What the plan is, I think the plan is if we play the merchant, play the seer, draw it all. Or I can play the merchant. Yeah, so I need to play the seer now or scrap. So if I scrap silver, or again for action coin silver, I play merchant and seer and draw it all. For action silver horse. That was the plan. And now I can play Merchant, play Seer. Okay, I put two silvers and a horse in hand. So the bottom card of the deck is a horse, which is nice. So um, 14 is a good number. They're dangerously close to piling here. I guess I can just kind of let them pile. Um, I really need to get a Royal Carriage and a Seer. So that will be the plan, like a Royal Carriage, a Seer, and can't really do much else. Um, Royal Carriage, Nomad Camp, Scrap. That's not, I don't have enough money. Um, okay, I guess I'm just getting real carriage here. 
and uh, hope to get enough overdraw that I can uh, do some butterfly tricks before that. But I suspect they'll be able to pile out this turn, actually. Um, just like a turn and a half to, to two, two behind. Yes, they've got, they don't have any more nomad camps. They do have some horses. They've got the scrap. So there's some some various things they can do here. Um, it may not be super easy for them to pile out here with 25, but they could also just like double province at this point. Um, you want to start doing things like returning merchant for nomad, returning horse for nomad camp, returning nomad camp for royal carriage, royal carriage, the or play nomad camp and royal carriage to get the effects you start doubling up on your cards. And um, if you can do that a couple of times, you know, you can get pretty big price points. I don't think they can do that twice and get to 15. That seems like a lot of um, a lot of effort, especially if they're royal carriaging all of the merchants. Um, yeah, the Crypt in retrospect, like, I don't know, if they're already so far ahead when they bought the Crypt, it's hard to say. But if I had gotten, and I had talked about it at the beginning, if I had, had been... If they didn't draw so well turn six and I was a little bit ahead, I think I would have gotten a crypt as well because it lets you do these fun tricks with Royal Carriage and potentially Grave Robber. Um, Royal Carriage and Grave Robber can be nice because you can trash an action from your hand. You can trash a, car a, a seer for a province and then gain the seer back. Um, that kind of thing. Um, especially because there's already a horse in the trash. I don't think I played this game particularly well, but... I don't know that with perfect play I would have been able to make up the, the difference. Um, so they're getting a nomad camp. They should have some draw here so they can, yeah, card action horse and they can return the nomad camp for a royal carriage or something. Um, it is possible that they leave one of these piles dangerously low. It's, it's very unlikely, but, um, it at least seems possible. Um, they must have another seer in hand, I guess. Yes, they have a seer in hand, so they're able to... Right, so they're able to play the seer to draw those things. The same thing I did last turn. Let's see. Um, pretty sure they don't have a win here. They've got two silvers, which gets them to nine money. Um, they would need 15 money to pile out. So that's seven, nine, 11. It's close. I don't think they're all the way there. Oh, they're merchants. So they are close to getting to 15 now. They've real carried, what, two, two merchants? So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I'm counting that correctly. So two silvers gets them to fourteen. Yeah, so if they can return this nomad camp, play two silvers. Yeah, I think if they can double the nomad camp, potentially they can get there.
trying to figure out what their hand is. They've got Nomad Camp. They've got two Silvers. I suspect they have one Copper. And I'm looking at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen money. Um, and they have a Royal Carriage on the mat. So if they play Nomad Camp for coins, return it. They're short a buy of piling out. It is, it looks like. Uh, so they're just not quite at a pile out, is my guess, because you need 17, because they have to score, so if they don't want to tie. So they would need 17 and four buys, which is more than they can do, or they would need... Yeah, so if they play the Nomad Camp twice, they get to four buys. Um, and I counted four, five, six, seven, eight, nine merchants. So that's 13 money, two silvers is 18, 19 money. That seems like enough to buy. Um, ah, and they would need 22 because they didn't, they aren't able to, uh, butterfly that nomad camp. Okay. That makes sense. I can remember that the nomad camp can get gained onto the deck by the horse. I guess that's, that's at least something worth, worth remembering um doesn't seem unreasonable for them to just buy two provinces here though it's not like i'm going to buy two provinces and try to pile out um it just makes the game go a little bit longer they could also like buy one province and a piece whatever whatever piece they want to buy um one province and like Real carriage archive or something, real carriage treasury, like lower the piles, but not within my reach. Um, like province duchy seer, province duchy seer, province duchy real carriage both feel completely safe. I can get to double province, I think, on a really good turn, but then I'm just we're just tied and they can try to empty the piles again next turn. All right, so let's play a Seer. It's a nice start. Um, my top deck to Rail Carriage. Let's play another Seer. Draw that. Okay, the draws are um, seemingly going my way here. Top deck to Seer. Okay, <clears throat> here are the bad cards. Which is fine. The very bottom card is a copper. Um, so the question is: If I'm going to rail carriage a merchant, I might as well do it now and draw the seer. Don't want to rail carriage that. Okay, so if I play this rail carriage, I draw, we'll draw two things from down there. Uh, so I can scrap a silver for um, something or other, or I can, yeah, I mean, I think I'm going to scrap a silver for action coin action horse silver. I can play this here now. I'll leave a copper on top. And I can butterfly a nomad camp, butterfly a horse for a nomad camp. Um, actually, uh, let's play that. Now I've got three merchants. It's three, 10, 14. So this is 16 here. And I can. Call a royal carriage to butterfly that for a grave robber and buy double province. And oof, this is a dud hand. So, unless they're also dudding here, which it actually looks like they might, did they just draw all of their royal carriages? It's kind of crazy. Um. That's like remarkably crazy. So 
So I'll have the grave. I'll have. Um, I'm assuming they're dudding here because otherwise. Um, wow, that was remarkably unlucky. Their next turn is going to be huge. Um, not that I can do anything because I also have a dud. <laughs> And Nurlad said, man, if I only had a perfect turn here, I could potentially empty the piles, except I don't even think my deck is capable of doing that. Um, just the Grave Robber gives me a little bit of something. something. Um, this is also Silvers. I think I would almost rather have Coppers um, in here and not be able to buy a Duchy. That's why I said they could have, they could have done Province... Duchy archive or something, or they could have even like top deck province traveling fair, top deck an archive or a seer or something. Uh, yeah. This should just be an easy pile out for them too, but weird draws like that, I guess, are why I didn't resign already. Um, I feel like I can do some stuff with this grave robber if I can, I can call real carriage. Grave Robber, two Sears to Province. Like, Triple Province is not out of the question with the Grave Robber and Real Carriages. Um, it really isn't, <laughs> as strange as that sounds. Um, I assume they're just going to be able to uh, able to buy, be able to get four things here, though. It seems like not too difficult. Like They, they were almost there with the tide, tide in points, and now they've got a three-point lead. They're kind of the dream draws. You draw a seer, you draw some merchants and horses, you play those, you get a couple of royal carriages down, you grave robber, you turn two seers or and uh, other royal carriage into into provinces, and you buy the last province or something. Um, I still have what two royal carriages down, one royal carriage down. Um, they do have to be able to draw around, but I've got four more merchants, I think. Um, I think that's all their Sears, though. Do they only have three Sears? Like, if they can't gain and play, the pileout is quite a bit harder. Um, although, I guess you can just top deck the Nomad Camps and draw them that way, because the Nomad Camp is gained at the top of your deck. Yeah, so all they have to do is hit 15 here, which I computed was pretty easy for them to do if they drew deck. Yeah, this looks like should be 15. I'm counting four, five, nine, two silvers is 13. Did they scrap for? Yeah. Oh, they can even return and it only takes 10. So all in all, that was a uh, bit of a match. Um, I managed to win two of the six, which is good. I felt like I was behind every game. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Please leave a comment. And um, I have two more matches to go. Um, hopefully I can uh, do well in those.